Hi boys and girls and welcome back to Storytime. My name is Merlene and today I'm going to be reading to you My Heart, Christ Home, Retold for Children. This is written by Robert Boy Munger with Carolyn Nystrom and the illustrations are by Jerry Tiratilli. Jesus came to my house. He walked up the steps and knocked softly at the door. I peeked out. It's Jesus, I shouted. Come into my house. We will have wonderful fun together. I opened the door and Jesus stepped in. Hello, Peter, he said. His smile was as warm as sunshine, his hug as big as the summer sky. I led Jesus to our back porch. Mom was making lunch there. Juicy peaches and crispy celery and mushy peanut butter with currant jelly. Mom looked up and smiled. Please eat lunch with us, she said. Jesus prayed, thank you, Father, for our food. Amen, we all said, and then we ate. I like your willow tree, Jesus said. I remember when my father and I thought up willow trees. We wanted branches that danced with the wind, then bowed low to kiss the ground. Sometimes I dance with the wind in the branches, I said. I jumped up and danced with the branches all around, and Jesus danced too. I knew you would like that tree, Peter, Jesus said. Let me show you our house, I said. I took Jesus' hand and led him inside. This is our kitchen, I said. Jesus looked all around. Did you help your mom make lunch here, he asked. I was glad that today I could say yes. Then I led Jesus to a doorway down the hall. This is my room, I said. I sleep here. I do my homework at this desk. I play with my trucks and make puzzles on this rug. And sometimes my friends sleep over on that bed. Jesus put his arm on my shoulder and looked all around my room. I like your room, he said. It looks like you. Just then I noticed a small wooden box peeking out from underneath the bed. I tapped it with my heel and pushed it further underneath. I hope Jesus didn't see it. This is our living room, I said next. My sister Janet was watching TV. She smiled and patted the seat next to her. I sat down, but Jesus kept standing in the doorway. On TV, I saw one man shoot another. I looked at Jesus. His eyes were so sad, so I got up and headed outdoors. Jesus followed. Janet didn't seem to see Jesus all, and I wondered why. Jesus and I played all day. I showed him my favorite place by the stream. We held tadpoles in our hand. A huge frog boom croak and we laughed. Oh, Peter, Jesus said, I'm glad I made frogs. That evening, mom invited Jesus to spend the night. You can stay in my room, I said. I'll help get your bed ready. We climbed into bed. Mom left the door ajar just so I could see the light in the hall. I tried not to look too hard at all the shadows in the room. Peter, are you afraid, Jesus asked. No, 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 I started to say but I could feel Jesus looking straight at me through the dark. Yes, I whispered, I'm afraid a lot. We talked for a long time. We talked about scary dreams and monsters and fingers tapping at my window and big guys on the playground and making mistakes that make people laugh at me. With Jesus in the bed next to mine, none of that seemed very scary. I don't remember closing my eyes, but I must have fallen asleep while Jesus was talking. In the morning, Jesus waited by the door to walk to school with me. Nobody noticed Jesus sitting beside me at my desk. I liked having him there. The teacher began to explain our work. She wrote on the overhead while she talked. I tried to keep up, but I couldn't watch and write and listen at the same time. I got scared and mad too. Maybe I'd get everything all wrong. Maybe she would ask me a question Maybe I would say something dumb and everyone would laugh. I wish she would slow down, but she went faster and faster. I wanted to cry. Help me, Jesus, I whispered. Jesus put his hand over mine and said, just listen now. Listen and think you can write later. I felt more calm. I didn't get everything right, but I got most of it. Thank you, Jesus, I said. After school, my friends and I played soccer. Jesus walked up and down the sidelines like a coach. I'm good at soccer and I play to win. 
I was the goalie, so the ball kept coming at me and at me and at me. I stopped it with my hands, knees, feet. I even got a header. Suddenly, the ball came at me again, fast. There must have been eight guys behind it. I slammed my whole body down on the ball, but the ball was just inside the goal. I scrunched myself a little to the outside, and the ball came too. Then I jumped up. It's out, I yelled. It is not, the other team yelled back. You moved it. My best buddy Jake was on the other team. He was yelling just as hard as anyone. Cheat, they screamed right into my face. Then everything got quiet. Nobody wanted to play anymore, and neither did I. I walked home hot and tired and dirty. I didn't say much to Jesus on the way. At home, I found my darkest pencil. I wrote something on a small piece of paper. I burrowed under my bed and dug out my box. I lifted the lid and looked inside. Yes, it was all still there. I threw in the paper and snapped the lid shut. Then I kicked the box back under my bed. I saw mom and Jesus in the kitchen. They were talking quietly at the table. I didn't feel like being with them, so I started towards the TV. I heard mom say to Jesus, I'm so glad you're here. Will you live with us always? Mom didn't even ask me first. I liked having Jesus visit my house, but living with us was something else. It felt funny having Jesus watch everything I did. I will be glad to make my home with you, I heard Jesus answer. I edged out of the kitchen and went back to my room. I dug my box out from under my bed and I buried it in the darkest corner of my closet. Then I closed the door tight. That night, Jesus slept on the bed in my room again. We didn't talk much. I noticed that he didn't sleep very well and neither did I. I got up early and ducked out the front door fast. I wanted to walk to school by myself. As I crossed the schoolyard, I thought I saw a shadow next to me. It didn't look like mine. When I looked again, the shadow was gone. I didn't see Jesus all day at school, but I saw the funny shadow once in a while. Math class was hard. We were learning to multiply. Everyone seemed to get it but me. I wished I could ask Jesus for help. At recess, Jake said hi. I acted like I didn't even hear him. After school, I pretended I was a football player carrying the ball. I put my head down and ran for home. Suddenly, I felt a strong arm shove against my chest. I sat down hard on the sidewalk. A truck thundered past inches from my shoes. Have you been with me all day? Yes, he said, but I didn't see you. Did you want to see me, Peter? He asked quietly. No, I answered. I felt embarrassed, but I had to tell him the truth. I knew you wanted to be alone, he said. Thanks for keeping me safe, I whispered. That night, I climbed into bed and pulled up the covers, but Jesus sat on the edge of his bed. I don't think I can stay in this room tonight, he said. It smells so awful. Last night, I couldn't even sleep. I think it's coming from the closet. Maybe it's my sneakers, I said. It's not sneakers, Jesus said. I don't mind the smell of sneakers at all. He pulled up his bedding and said, I'll sleep on the porch tonight as he walked out. I stayed awake a long time. There was a funny smell coming from my closet. I knew what it was. It was hidden in the furthest corner and it was mine. My room seemed extra dark. The shadows seemed extra huge. I knew the tapping at the window was just a branch on the bush outside, but it scared me anyways. I missed Jesus. In the morning, I ran to the porch. Jesus sat up and stretched. I dreamed I was dancing with the willow tree, he said. I woke up and the willow was tickling my beard. We both laughed. We ate breakfast on the porch. I like Saturday. After breakfast, Jesus said, well, my friend, we have some work to do. It's time to tackle your closet. But it's my closet, I tried not to yell. Those are my things. I like them just the way they are. If you want me to live with you, Jesus said, we will have to get rid of that stink. We walked down the hall together. I could smell something awful even before we got to the door. I crawled into the darkest, furthest corner of the closet. Slowly, I put my hands on my wooden box. Slowly, I brought it out. 
Together, we pried open the lid. I wish no one had to see what was inside. Two shiny wings I pulled off of a live butterfly, a small car that I took from Jake's house last summer, and a scribbled note in huge angry letters, I hate you, Jake. Jesus looked a long time at all the things in my box. His face was sad, but in a funny way, he looked like he loved me. I'm sorry, I said. I forgive you, Jesus answered, and he held me with a huge hug. Do you want me to stay with you always, Jesus asked. Yes, I answered, and this time I was sure. We will give the car back to Jake, Jesus said, but you must let me keep the box. That's all right, I said. I don't want it anymore. When I am with you, other people may not see me, Jesus told me. I know. And here's the hard part, Jesus said. You may not always see me either, even when you want to. I want you with me always. I belong to you. Then I will make my home with you, Jesus smiled. Even when I'm afraid? Especially when you're afraid, Jesus said. I will live with you forever, he added. Forever, I echoed.